Right now on Up With Krem, Hoop Fest canceled for the second year. It hurts my heart. My, my heart is hurt is, what, is how I feel. Heartbreak from athletes and longtime fans. We ask the organization why they made the decision. A little bit of cloud cover to start the day, a little bit of sun in the middle of the day, then more clouds and then even the chance of rain before a beautiful weekend ahead. I've got a lot in today's forecast. Forget that old excuse of a dog ate my homework. A new trend of faking a positive COVID-19 test could be the new way for students to get out of class. And today we are trying CrossFit. That's right, we are going head to head with the fittest woman in the world. Let's go! Let's go! <laughs> Up with Krim begins now with Tim Pham, Channing Curtis, and Jeremy Legou. Well, for the second year in a row, Hoop Fest is canceled. It's disappointing news, uh, but it comes as COVID cases and hospitalizations increase all over the country. Well, good morning and welcome to Up With Krim. I'm Channing Curtis. Glad to have you here with us on this Thursday. I'm Tim Pham. Well, Hoop Fest says that decision is, quote, excruciatingly difficult, but it was made after numerous discussions with the governor's office and the Washington State Department of Health. That's right. Now, this morning, our Nicole Hernandez is joining us live from the Hooptown U.S courts in Riverfront Park. So Nicole, what does this mean for the teams that have already registered for the tournament? Yeah, so teams are going to have a few different options, but of course, uh, bummer news, especially for these courts here that we're going to be used for the first time in a Hoop Fest history here. So as of right now, we do know, of course, that Spokane's Hoop Fest is the absolute largest three on three basketball tournament in the entire world. It brings thousands of people specifically here to the Spokane area from spectators and Player. So if you are a player, if you did sign up to register, there's a few options that you have as to what you're going to do next. So you can either decide to donate your uh, your fee there that you paid to the Hoop Fest organization, or you can ask for a partial 20% refund. The reason for the partial refund is because the decision to cancel the event did not happen until yesterday. Team captains, captains will be receiving an email to determine whether or not they want to donate or they want that partial refund. The requested refunds will be processed by September 30th. Now what teams will be receiving include a HoopFest 2021 official player t-shirt and the team captain will also receive a HoopFest basketball. Executive Director of HoopFest Director uh, Matt Santangelo says stopping the event doesn't just impact the people participating but also the people who work for HoopFest. I feel like you, you let so many people down. You know, HoopFest is such a treasure, it's such a gem for the, the region from a uh, you know, basketball playing from a connection and love from the volunteers, from the support of sponsors and ultimately like the economic impact to the region. It's just it just it has such a great and, and uh, far reaching impact. Now, HoopFest was scheduled for the 11th and 12th of next month. The event typically brings in about 24,000 players from across the United States and the entire world every single year. 45 city blocks typically of Spokane are shut down during the tournament to create 422 different courts. Now, HoopFest 2022 is currently slated for June 25th and 26th. If that does end up happening by the time we get to that point, it will have been three years since our last HoopFest event. Live in Spokane, I'm Nicole Hernandez. Now, of course, this is such disappointing information for so many people all over the Inland Northwest and even oh, all across the country. Such a bummer. So for the latest on HoopFest being canceled, all you have to do is text the word HoopFest to 509-448-2000. And we do want to let you know that coming up on the CW22 at 730, Executive Director Matt Santangelo will be joining us live here on the show. We'll talk with him more about the decision to cancel HoopFest, your questions about refunds, and anything else about maybe what the future of HoopFest yeah. could look like like in the next year. But yeah, yeah, such a bummer because it is a Spokane tradition. Yes. People look forward to this event every year and people come back to Spokane yeah. all the time just for Hoop Fest weekend. Absolutely, it's a lot of fun, so it's sad we won't be able to see yeah. it this year, but it'll be back next year. Yeah, which actually isn't even a full year away. I was, I was yeah. just thinking that when Nicole was talking about June, like that's it's true. still, you know, far away, but it, you know, it's not a full, full year away. Yes, it could be worse. Yeah, it could be worse. 
All right, the time is now 6.04. Jeremy Legoo is outside in the Outdoor Weather Center. Jeremy, what's going on out there? How's it feeling? Uh, it feels a little bit cooler. We had about a six degree drop in temperatures from where we were just an hour ago. But as we always talk about, this is typically the coolest hour of the entire day, that hour right where the sun is coming up. So as I look up, a little bit of cloud cover, a little bit of a smoky haze, and that's how we kick things off. As I mentioned, 54 degrees here in Spokane. All around the inland northwest, it's temps a little bit cooler. 57 in Moses Lake, 56 in Coeur d'Alene, 43 in Sandpoint, and 64 in Wenatchee early on this morning. AQI currently sits at a 54. It's odd, 54 degrees, 54 on the AQI. No, that is real. That is actually the case. A little bit of light wind means a lot of that's getting kind of stirred up. I think you still can get outside. There's no smell of smoke. 54 is close to good in terms of AQI. So get outside and enjoy it. Right now, a little bit of cloud cover moving through. Things are starting to get blocked out by the sun, but there you go. We wind up catching a bit, a bit of sun through the middle part of the day. Then more clouds filter in as we head into the afternoon and evening. That comes ahead of a nighttime round of showers that moves through most of that activity well off to the north here in Spokane. A couple of stray sprinkles could be about the extent of it. And then we watch that chance of showers or the possibility taper off as we move through the day on Friday. So things nah, well, we want the rain. It's just not necessarily going to happen. A little bit of wind arrives today along with some of those clouds. You can feel that outside this morning. And as we move into the afternoon, temps in the mid to upper 70s. Midday break when it comes to sunshine. And so if you're getting outside to do a little dog walking on National Dog Day, ha, ah, took a while, but I got it. I think you're good basically all day long. Early in the morning, maybe grab a coat. Later on this afternoon, get outside and enjoy some of our cooler temps. It is time for your morning rush. More news in less time. Spokane City Council candidate Tyler LeMasters was removed from the 2021 general election ballot. Now, a superior court judge ruled that he did not live in the city long enough to meet the residency requirement. This comes after two registered Spokane voters filed a petition of removal. Now, Crim 2 has reached out for comment, but we have not yet received a response. Tacoma ranks number one among major cities across the entire country for the highest combined state and local sales tax rate. The nonprofit Tax Foundation says Tacoma's tax rate is 10.3%. Seattle is tied with five other cities for the second highest at 10.25%. Washington State ranked fourth in the nation for highest combined state and local sales tax rate. Catholic schools in Spokane will follow Washington's vaccine mandate for teachers. Bishop Thomas Daly says he wrote to Spokane priests clarifying the effect of the vaccine mandate on Catholic schools. Bishop Daly also says he encourages people of Eastern Washington to get the vaccine to protect others, especially children. After 530 days, the famous Knitting Factory concert venue in downtown Spokane is reopened. The venue will be following the statewide mask mandate. They are making an effort to give back to the community through local charities and outreach. The Knitting Factory also named its new general manager, Caleb Ingersoll. Well, he helped create the Shake Alert early warning system for quakes. Now, a University of Oregon seismologist is hoping to use the technology to warn people about wildfires. Doug Toomey says the alert wildfire system is the 21st century version of the fire lookout tire, tower when firefighters fires man towers to spot fires. Now cameras are on the towers. Firefighters or first responders can log on to the alert wildfire website and then move the cameras around to where the fires actually are. The public can even go on to the website and see the fires for themselves. They're no longer waiting for level two, level three evacuation notice. They're no longer caught off guard. They can have their own eyes on and see how fires are developing and take appropriate action. The Alert Wildfire Network currently has more than 800 cameras situated around the West. However, most are in California. Now that's your morning rush. More news in less time. Let us know what's happening in your neighborhood by using the hashtag Up With Krim on social media. Well, the Up With Krem team got the chance to do a little CrossFit and uh, yeah, we're still a little sore. This Absolutely. <laughs> It went, well. it went well. We did fine. <laughs> but we got a big help from Tia Vassar, the world's fittest woman on earth. You're going to have to come join us after the break to see what happens. All right. Hopefully we make it. You will because you're out. Yes. Oh, no. Oh, gosh. I'm getting flashbacks. Yeah, I have PTSD. <laughs> <laughs> it was tough, guys. It was really tough.
It was, or it was fun. It was kind of fun. I had fun. I know, right? <laughs> like, guys, that was a I'm just messing with you guys. Oh. All right, today is a great day to get the dog outside. After all, it's National Dog Day. We've got your dog walking forecast coming up after the break.